So welcome to today's Montague Group's Conversations That Connect. Today we're catching up about the current market. Uh, There's been a few redundancies lately. Yeah, and I think it also makes sense because it's um, like the whole COVID recruitment was never going to sustain. So that was sort of February, March, April, that was a whole bunch of redundancies. And then I don't think people got, or the companies got rid of all the excess. Yeah. And because the market slowed down, that's that second round coming happening. through. Um, it's definitely happening in the recruitment industry. Um, yeah, so there's definitely been that round in recruitment, which um, it's just the market. It's contracting, expanding, contracting, expanding. So it's con- it's contracting at the moment. And we yeah. just, we're going to just keep doing what we're doing. Mm, and I, yeah. And I think too, with end of financial year, a lot of government um, budgets and everything, they had to tighten those down oh, coming yeah. into the end of financial year. And then now it's, we haven't really seen a lot of government roles. Yeah. So few, yeah. I would say the last, probably June, July. So that's all yeah. starting to come back again, but not, not as much as it has yeah, been so yeah yeah so i think it's just that uncertainty again mm. um, yeah it feels to me like this market hasn't had a certainty in it there's been a lot of uncertainty the last three years and just because COVID, COVID's finished well sort of mm. that doesn't mean that the uncertainty is gone there's still a little bit of uncertainty well there's still uncertainty in the market And I think the uncertainty is, um, I've had just had a very interesting conversation with a candidate where the client, the company he's working for is um, going back to five days in the office. And I said to him, why? What's the, what's the reason for this? And he's like, they can't really give us a reason. Like there's no compelling reason to go back into the office. So that uncertainty is is my company going to do it are they not what does this look like so it yeah it just hasn't landed yet it just yeah. hasn't landed. it's going to be i think it's going to be another six twelve months mm. to resettle reset land and like okay this is what this is really, and the economy that's not helping no the economy is uncertain as well so it's just it's, it's just a weird place. yeah it's a lot of moving parts from the small ones to the big part, every part is moving. So, mm. and well, it's moving, but it's not actually giving any clarity as to what the moving is going to be, what looks like. So, it's just the space that we're in. So, yeah. clients are contracting, candidates are looking around, yeah. Seeing, yeah, seeing what's available, or just going, hang on, I'm just going to stay where I'm at. Mm. And, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm finding, yeah, with candidates, well, most recently, especially in New South Wales, I'm finding a lot of candidates, while they got a job during that COVID period, and it was, again, that work from home part. So it didn't matter where you lived in Sydney, you could get to work, but now it's mandated five days in the office, and it's taking people over an hour to get into the office now. So it's like, mm, a lot of people are looking for that flexibility or somewhere closer because that hour and a half there and back that's three hours a day that they're wasting on transport and yeah. also time and money on transportation so now they've come back out of that and they're all looking for work and even they've only been in that job for not a long like for not a huge amount of time but yeah i'm seeing a lot of that a lot of long commute where they didn't have to commute before yeah. and now they're looking for that change again to find somewhere closer or somewhere that offers that fle- flexibility. Yeah. And that's something that I, um, I'm i not actually sure why it's so hard for businesses to see mm. that an hour-long commute or two-hour-long commute um, every day impacts. It's not nothing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't understand why we have to go back to five days a week. Yeah. Because. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's the, the, 
I think it's the why, yeah. what the reason. And I think people, so I also think if I can understand the why, I'd be able to go, okay, well, that works for me or it doesn't. But if it's just because that's the problem yeah. or there's no compelling reason around why it is happening. And if you can't give a compelling reason, then people make up their own minds as to why the reason is. And it's not always the, it's not usually not the right reason and it's not a good reason. Mm. So, yeah, there's, it's still, it's going to be, I don't know. I don't know where it's going to end or what that's going to look like. My, what we're probably seeing most is the hybrid working environment, which yeah. is interesting. And there's reasons, the reason for that is maybe, you know, the culture, connecting with people um, on a face-to-face -face basis. But then the rest of the argument is, well, if I go into the office, the people that I have to connect with face to face are not in the office. So I end up sitting on Zoom, connecting with my team or the rest of the. So it's the logistics around that as well, trying mm -hmm. to figure that out and what does that look like um, yeah. to best serve the company at the end of the day. Um, and the, the company is the people making yeah. sure that everybody's happy and doing the work and pulling in the same direction. Um, but yeah, you're right. A lot of, like Taylor said, a lot of people took the jobs mm -hmm. because they were 100% remote. And now that's changing. So that has a huge impact mm -hmm. on their commute. And they might have been commuting the last six months and then realizing, no. It's exhausting. Yeah, it's exhausting. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine traveling three, four hours a day. No, me um, neither. Like, Imagine having to wake up at 4.30 every day to be at work at by 7.30 and it's an hour and a half commute. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's insane. No. Thank you. And once you've seen a better way, yeah. you can't unsee it. Correct. And I'm not sure what the motivation or the psychology yeah. is behind, no, no, we must get back to the way that it was. I don't yeah. understand what is the driving force I do understand hybrid. I think, you know, work can provide some social connection and some yeah. culture and things like that and those kind of vibes that you do need at work. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you need it all the time. I think, um, yeah, I just, I'm not quite sure. And I don't think that people will, are satisfied with I have to do as I'm told anymore. Yeah. That's, that, that's is not, that is not at the attitude of people, they're like, no, actually, this gives me more about of what I want. And right. yeah, mm. people very much subscribe to life's too short kind of thing, especially after COVID. Yeah, I think you're 100% right. They've seen the other side of the coin. And if the reason is not, if the reason doesn't make sense that I have to go into the office yeah. five days a week, then why would I? And also, once you've given something, to then take it away without a compelling reason, you will get people that will go no. Mm. Yeah. If, if that if it doesn't make sense, then I'm not doing it. So we've definitely the conversations we've had, a lot of the conversations, actually kind of didn't make that connection, but a lot of the conversations that we've had the last few weeks has been about the commuting. Yeah, definitely. And, changes within the the candidate organization and because of those changes it means they have to commute or they have been commuting because of changes and it's just not working for them yeah that's actually been quite a few of the conversations yeah. we've had yeah uh, and i'm finding it more and more especially like around like the sydney market mm. that's sort of where i'm finding it is a massive big yeah, it's it's a massive impact the yeah. travel that is happening in the Sydney market because Sydney's huge. Yeah, like it takes a few hours to get from one side to the other. But yeah, I mean, you can find really good candidates that are like two hours away from the office, but they're not willing to offer that flexibility. So I mean, that's yeah, that's hard and yeah, struggling to find 
yeah, those candidates that are in the area that the office is in, that's the biggest struggle at the moment because of those commute reasons. Correct. Yeah. So you're ruling out a whole, well, we're not ruling out, the company that no, we're working yeah. with rules out a whole bunch of people that could be very, very suitable, but mm. because of the location that doesn't work. And that has been the case before COVID, before remote working was an option. Location played a huge part in candidates making a decision if they take a job or not. Um, now the question will be, is the work remote? And if the answer is no, then the other questions will be asked. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also making the market, candidate market, so much smaller mm -hmm. that companies can draw talent from. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think all of that, sorry, Taylor, all of that adds mm -hmm. to just the uncertainty mm -hmm. and maybe uncertainty is not the right word. There's just a lot of moving parts um, and that has a big impact, not just in the work environment, but economically, where does what's happening around the world? There's a lot of things that are not answered. It's not like this is what it is. Yeah. Um, and I know there's no absolutes, but at least if you have an idea of, okay, this is what I think the next two years will look like. But it's just like, I was looking at the interest rate last last Tuesday going, is it, is it not, is it, is it not? Oh, it's not. Okay, great. Well, that's not, okay, it might it might look like this for the next three months so we can start planning things. Like, yeah. okay, well, we'll just wait for next, first Tuesday of next month to see if that changes because there's a very strong possibility that the interest rate will go up again. Yeah. So it's that. That's playing a huge mm. impact mm. and mm. just every like the rise in everything, like the rise in rates, electricity. I know we our electricity has gone up, um, like everything, our phone bills, uh, internet, everything. So sure. I think that is a huge impact, especially if the client can't guarantee permanent work yeah lot well or at least a long-term contract yeah yeah not many people are willing to leave for short-term work at the moment no no it's, they, they want the certainty yeah if, whatever they can control to have mm -hmm. certainty that's what they will control yeah to make a decision which is a hundred percent understandable and then from our side like how do we fit into this environment is really just again having those completely transparent conversations to say this is the client this is the role this is where they base this is their expectation in terms of working in the office working from home don't give me an answer right now go think about it go yeah. make a decision sure. and i think in some cases we sometimes play a little bit of devil's advocate mm -hmm. Are you 100% sure? Yeah. Think about it. The commute that you're doing at the moment is two hours. This one is only an hour and a half. So it's is that really saving you exactly. a lot of time? It's 30 minutes shorter. So really just having hard, honest conversations um, to make sure that the next move is really the move that the candidate is looking for, but then also being able to go to the client and say, We've had the tough conversation. Yeah. You don't. You can touch on it. You can speak to it about again. But the candidate is going in knowing exactly what to expect from this position. Yeah. Um, and they've committed. They've said mm -hmm. yes. There's no false expectations or no. false realities or anything like that. Correct. And that's all we can do is like keep everything above. The surface make sure everybody knows what's on the playing field and if we can help we can help if we can't we can't um and that's just the way we operate it's a very yeah, transparent way of working yeah and if it's not this opportunity there's Next nothing one. to say something else won't come up soon right. like if we could get a phone call this afternoon with a perfect job that might suit suit the candidate or we could get one next week or in six months time like we just never know so yeah. I think candidates shouldn't be pressured to accept a job if it doesn't tick every single one of their boxes yeah especially um, like if you're applying for it like after we have that conversation don't don't just say oh I want to I want to put it forward because of this and this but what about the other three major ones 
but this is the best that's there at the moment i yeah i don't know it's an it's, opportunity exactly like you just never know what's around the corner so don't just take something because it's there take it because it's right for you yeah what you're talking about is a quality match not quantity yeah. just because it's there right. yeah i think it's interesting that you're saying commuting is the biggest sort of bugbear you've had to talk about over the last few weeks because it goes to show that there's a problem in the flexibility of what is being offered i suppose in that well, I, I think the problem lies in what the the goalposts are being changed mm. Mm. so it wasn't a problem so they took candidates took a position based on the information and the, the circumstances at the time which mm -hmm. could have been working from home or 100 percent remote position and then that has changed yeah and a lot of the guys we're talking with are are still working for the same organization and they're commuting into the office but it's not sustainable and it was never going to be sustainable if you employed somebody that lives three hours from the office at the time when remote working was an option knowing that that might change that would never have worked like nobody's going to travel four five six hours a day right. to get to work never so i think there's a little bit of that happening where the goalposts are actually changing i know you've studied um is it industrial psychology yeah yeah so is it a is it like a thing where you know society has changed and, and workplaces are still not implementing society's changes into the workplace. They still see it as separate. Does that make sense? I think it's I think it's bigger than that. I think it's the um, people want to work for us, so they'll work for us. They it's still almost, that. yeah. It's almost uh, well. Why wouldn't they? like well no that's changed because people's values have changed yeah and Post -COVID. yes mm. and companies adapted to that all of a sudden overnight i could work from home and i could do that for two years what has changed in those two years that i now can't work from home anymore and if that sometimes there's a compelling reason why that has changed and the candidates can accept that and go oh that makes 100 percent sense and i still have to make decisions but a lot of the time there's no real compelling reason why it's happening why these decisions are being made so um and saying i told you so i don't think that works anymore no no at all no that's just yeah like making people not want to do it oh absolutely 100%. yeah yeah i spoke with a candidate this morning and he's looking around and the reason why he's looking around is not because they've been told to go back to the office five days a week he well yes it is but it was the way that it was done it was just mandated mm -hmm. you will you will and you will tell your team that they do that and he's like no that's not right no it's not right um yeah and i think that's where personal values and a lot of things come into play so how crucial is it to recruit the right people mm -hmm. that, with the right values with the right skill set everything we spoke about last week that you have to have on your resume that is so important for that whole recruitment process to tick the boxes to have the right people in the right company um mm -hmm so that those conversations can be had i think on a more transparent level because you have to have buy-in if you don't have the buy-in from your staff how do you know what's happening not going to happen yeah. Um, yeah exactly so it's just it's an it's an interesting space for us to sit in and i think all the the biggest thing we can do is like i said have the conversations ask the tough questions make a hundred percent sure that you've thought about everything worst case scenario best case scenario mm -hmm. um and then once we submit a candidate to a client 
we can say that we've had those tough conversations and we've ticked the boxes and they're happy to commute or to whatever work yeah. five days a week or work three days a week um so yeah mm -hmm. uh, and both sides have the conversations on both sides and ask the tough questions on both sides yeah. and a lot of the times it's not necessarily the the HR person that we're working with that's made well they haven't made the decision they've just been told as well so um yeah and that all adds to just this weird space we're sitting in at the mm -hmm. moment. <laughs> yeah it's definitely a different one mm -hmm. yeah yeah I don't know what has to happen though for them to kind of like I think I don't prior to COVID if so, if your boss told you something you would just go and do it mm -hmm. there wasn't I don't think there was that much room for discussion or anything like that but now that the space has been opened that i feel like well i don't know if this is true or not but the discussion needs to be able to go both ways if they need people to commute for reasons and collaborate on an idea to come up with how that could work for both parties because it's more than just the client or just the candidate two people or you know two parties need to get something out of that relationship or that position or that role yeah. um but I don't know, yeah, I just, I can't see how it's going to go back to everyone just going, oh, okay, well, this is what I have to do. And if I have to travel, you yeah. know, three hours a day, so be it. Like, yeah. and I would have thought given the skill shortage out there, you want to keep your people. If you have buying for people and that's the only reason why they're not staying with you, what wouldn't you do? Yeah. Correct. And I think there's a misconception that there's still a lot of talent in the market. There's 100%. Yeah. It's Clients are... Straight up. No. Yeah. 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 Clients are seeing a resume that's ticking 70, 80% of the boxes, won't give them a chance because they think somebody else is out there that's going to tick 100% of those boxes. But really, we're only finding those people that are ticking 80%. And that first candidate that we could have submit like that we submitted could be their perfect candidate but because they've waited too long we can only now find people who are ticking 60 percent of the boxes they've lost out on that candidate because somebody else has snapped them up because they saw the potential so that's also like another weird space as well that we're okay. seeing can good candidates are getting snapped up really quickly but also they are but they aren't mm. they are to the companies who who see the potential they hire for what if not that's like right now you don't have that skill they're like well we can train you in that skill yeah. where the other half of it is waiting for that specific skill in that specific area in that specific time frame so it's very like it's narrowing down even further and then by the time they've seen 10 resumes, that person's gone, that 80% yeah. of the boxes. So, yeah. 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 And I think that's a, yes, that's, that's a concern, but that's also a bigger, I think a bigger thing that needs to be addressed is why does it take so long to recruit? Yeah. Why is there not gone? We've got clients that have, that <laughs> we can put a candidate in front of them, tell them why we're putting them in front of them, Here's the reason, meet them and go, perfect candidate. Yes, they don't have everything we're looking for, but great personality, fantastic attitude, resilience I can pick up. There's all these non-measurables mm. um, and then take them on board. And it's just, it, it's something beautiful yeah. because the candidate is being given the opportunity. They know I, I was a little bit short on my skill set, but I'm taken on because of who I am. And so that I makes them, I can work. Exactly. And that makes them feel so valued. And like it just creates like, oh, I am worth it. Yeah. They it's see quality, that I am worth it. Yeah. It's a quality placement connection. Quality. It's everything that people are looking for in life. Yes. It makes them want to stay and work hard and yeah. yeah. But that hiring manager either had the confidence or the support 
to take that risk. It's a calculated yeah. risk, but to take yeah. that risk. So a manager in another organization that's not prepared to take that risk, that's probably the biggest question as to why. Mm. If you see it and it's there and you're going, well, hang on, I'll wait for perfect. Perfect doesn't exist. We try and get as close to that as possible. Mm -hmm. But recruitment is 120% timing. Yes. Timing. So, yeah, it's there's it's complicated. It's not a this is this needs to change for that needs to change. We were dealing with people. People are complex. People are um, employees, employers, yep. husbands, wives, dads. You know, there's a whole a range of hats that people wear, and all of that has an influence in where they are at the moment having to change jobs or make decisions or hire people. Um, and I think for us, where we can step into that space is just go, okay, we see both sides. Mm -hmm. We understand what the client's looking for, why they're looking for it, where the business is at the moment, and this will be the right candidate to put into that not necessarily based on skills. Skills mm. are given, it's the other things that yeah. are important. And those other things are really hard yeah. to get across in a resume as well. Yeah. So it's also painting that picture on that cover letter that this is the personality and that we've spoken to this candidate, we've seen them over Zoom or Google, whatever. We've visually spoke to them and on the phone and yeah that emails exactly. their response time how they respond yeah. interaction yeah. all of those little things mm. it's not that feeling is hard to express in a resume and that we try to get that feeling across to the client in sort of our conversations with them and our cover letter and what we do and vice versa yeah 100 percent vice versa yeah. as well this is the client this is who they are this is what they represent this is the hiring manager i said to a, a client the other day yes i represent the company when we go out to find people for a specific role um, but more than that we represent the hiring manager because that's who that person will be working with as mm -hmm. well so there's a few there's a few layers in that cake that need to tick the boxes for a candidate um so it might be, oh, we're representing Suncorp, but within Suncorp, they've got rules and regulations through the organization, but the manager that you're reporting to, this is their background. This is how they've gotten to this position. And that ticks boxes on the candidate side. So it's, yeah, it's big. It's big. Yeah. I don't know how we got onto this topic. I think it's the um, the uncertainty that we're feeling. <laughs> I have been feeling it's been it's been an uncertain market for a yeah. long time, yeah. um, and I think people have gone, "Oh, COVID's finished. Now we're back, and it's all good." No, it's not. It's I, it's not. Is it is it ever going to be all good now? Though I don't. I, Depends I, on I, what all good is. Yeah, if all good is pre-COVID. No, it will never be that. No. Never be that. As a society, we've never been through anything like this before. No. Um, and so we're still, um, I guess, you know, you look back in history and big things happen and, you know, societies and civilizations have to rebuild, recover, you know, they adapt, they change. Yeah. And this is our, probably one of our things that have happened. This is our version of that. Yeah. And we're still working it out. And I think one of the things we do is um, we try to go back to what's familiar, what we used to do, because we think that's what was comfortable, that's how it was before. But a lot of the time, you just have to move forward because life doesn't allow it anyway. That's why, yeah. you know, if if um, candidates are saying that this is what they want or this is, and they're saying no to things because there's not that flexibility they're looking for, well, which person's going to change or which party's going to change yeah, which party get what they want do you know what i mean so yeah, yeah. and that i think that's the struggle or the the yeah that's the balance balance that's unsettled at the moment and that balance needs to fall somewhere and it will be different for every organization absolutely yeah of what their requirements will be um yeah and, and but that's it. It's that resettling, re 
what does this look like for us? Mm -hmm. And that's that's going to take time. It's going to take time. And yeah. I think the priority has to be um, the quality that you guys were talking about before, mm -hmm. um, the quality of the connection and the, the yeah. candidate and the placement so it's yeah. the right fit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there's Correct. no point in getting someone who's not the right fit, but they're willing to travel three hours. It's not going to make any difference. Yeah. 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 Correct. And even more than that, we spoke about this this week as well, is who we work with, like who our clients are and who our candidates are. Obviously, you gravitate to organisations and managers and candidates that are similar to who you are. Yeah. Um, so even in that we're not just working with anybody and everybody. We work with the people that connect with us, that share the values, that we feel happy to put you into an organisation that we know will look after you because yeah. we want that longevity. We want you to be there until it's time for that next move, not because you have to make the next move. Um, and obviously there's no guarantees with that, but... Um, that's the idea. That, that's why there's... There's work for all recruiters out there because we're all different. We all attract different people. We all um, relate to different people as well. You don't have to, we, we just, we need a small piece of the cake. We don't want the whole cake. Yeah. Um, ideally, I don't want to, I don't want to work with all the organizations out there. I want to work with the people and connections yeah. that, that we can help and we can add value to. Yeah, but also it's personal for us as well. It's not just hitting those targets and numbers. Like it's, we're not a large company at all and like we yeah it's like hitting those numbers so being like i need 10 resumes be like okay here they are that's that's not how we do it we make sure that we put the right again the right person with the right thing uh, with the right company because it's personal to us it's not just hitting those numbers because we have to it's getting those people because we want to yeah. yeah, it's about quality connections. Yes. From the very beginning. Correct. Yeah. From resumes to submissions to interviews. Correct. It's all of it. Yeah. Yeah. And even before that, just yeah. touching base to say, hey, okay. I can you with your resume. Yeah. yeah. That's it. It's that connection of I think I think Taylor, what what we try and do, obviously, you know, we have to make money as a company. Mm. We've got to make money, we've got to survive, and we we've want to pay the bills. Money. We've got to pay the bills. <laughs> Um, but we want to leave this industry in a better place. Yeah. yeah. We want to not just add value to our clients, but add value to the recruitment industry where candidates can go and go, well, I've worked with Montague and they're really great. They were they listened to me. They might not have found me in my job, but they helped me with my resume. Yeah. And I think that comes down to trust. Yeah. There's a lot of stigma again in the industry and you can't trust people there's a lot of people that take advantage yes of, of the, candidates of and like vice versa too candidates take advantage of recruiters too so it's yeah finding those right people that you trust that they trust you you trust them to do the best thing by you 100 percent of the time yeah. and that comes down to yeah candidates and clients too and not just working with somebody because you have to working yeah. with someone because you want to yeah and we try we try we strive for that um, yeah we strive for that don't mm. get it right all the time but that's what we strive for. And we, we do review and go, what could we have done differently? Mm. What should we have done differently? Yeah. Um, it's a continuous improvement process for us as well. Um, yeah. yeah, but we still love it. Yes, we do. Still love it. And still <laughs> get a massive kick out of placing somebody in a position where we know. Yeah. They're going to thrive. Like it's a career-defining yeah. move or... Yeah, I'm just, for some of those candidates that we've placed, I'm just waiting for that call to say, hey, I've been promoted. Yes. Like, I am just waiting for that day. Yeah. And we don't always get that that satisfaction of being included in that journey because our role was played and our role that, that we played 
was probably a four week role, maybe a five week or a six week role that we played in that career change. Mm -hmm. But we keep our eyes on LinkedIn and we can see. Um, we know yeah. what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of satisfaction on that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's where we are at the moment. It's just another cycle in that we're feeling we're experiencing another cycle in um, the industry and it goes through cycles and you just have to adapt. Mm. Yeah, and that's where it's at at the moment. Yep, 100%. Yeah. Adapt, 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 adapt. Improvise, overcome. And resilience. That's oh, <laughs> resilience is Emotional the intelligence and resilience is <laughs> yeah. at, at all times. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. That's probably it. Yes, that's it. That's, yeah. That's yeah. us. That's where we are. So that's it for today. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again next time.